After it is designed, but before it can be occupied, a building must be constructed. This is the story of the construction of Paul Milstein Hall at Cornell University. Once the adjacent building foundations have been underpinned and retaining walls have been put in place, the site is more fully excavated. This excavation is fairly substantial, since a good deal of Milstein Hall is located below grade. On the other hand, because there are relatively few columns supporting Milstein's superstructure, and because this superstructure itself is relatively heavy, ordinary spread footings will not work. Unlike the foundations for most of the adjacent campus buildings, like Sibley and Rand Hall, which consist of conventional spread footings immediately below the lowest occupied level, typically the basement level, Milstein Hall will need cylindrical concrete caissons to be placed beneath the footings, actually beneath what are called caisson caps that bring the column loads all the way down to bedrock, 20 or 30 feet lower. In other words, holes for the caissons must first be drilled into the earth, beginning at the bottom of the excavation, where the basement slab will be, and proceeding down until solid rock is hit. The process requires some specialized equipment and expertise. A large drill or auger is used to drill the hole. And so this one drills into the rock. And which one actually gets that debris out? There's another one. Oh, one, one of those. One of those, okay. It has a compartment in it. Oh, yeah? It it up. It's got only a partial on the bottom, and it cuts it screws it right off. Various sleeves are temporarily inserted to keep dirt from collapsing into the hole before the concrete is cast. it on all sides. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're keyed into the rock on the bottom, and all the weight is directly on top of it. Yeah. There's no side motion. If you had any kind of side motion, and then you have to reinforce it, it'll break off. Yeah. Surprisingly, no reinforcement is used since the adjacent soil is sufficiently stiff to keep the caissons from buckling. Reinforcing bars, or rebars, are inserted into the top of the caissons so that they can be tied into the caisson caps. Was in there. Yeah. Oh, I love that little notch there. Once the caissons have been cast, these caps are placed on top of them, similar to ordinary spread footings in terms of their position relative to the rest of the building. Like spread footings, they gather the load from the superstructure. Formwork is set up for the foundation walls, both at the perimeter of the site and elsewhere. After one face of the forms is completed, 
A grid of rebars is inserted next to the interface of the forms. Can you do like a backflip for me for the oh, video? Absolutely. Once complete, the second form surface is put into place so that the reinforcement is sandwiched between the two form layers. Formwork ties connect these two form surfaces and hold them perfectly in position, resisting the outward pressure of the wet concrete before it cures and hardens. So if you were up at the top of the form. For a little bit, I'm showing that. They're pumping the concrete right in there. The concrete is then pumped into the form from the top. Vibrators are inserted into the concrete to ensure that all voids are filled. Once the concrete is cured sufficiently, the forms can be removed. In order to create a corrugated texture on some of the concrete wall surfaces, special form liners are placed in the forms. And this is made out of, is this vinyl? This is that, yeah, that poly, some type of, I guess, rubber. So it's a little soft, yeah. Yeah, and then it gets a, a really high-end form release on it uh, in order to relieve all the sure. stone patterns. And you can see the sample that was in our trailer. That was cast from one of these panels. Yep. That's the knockoff product that we discussed. Uh -huh. After the concrete cures and the outer forms are removed, these form liners are peeled away, revealing the finished surface. This surface has the appearance of jackhammered concrete in which aggregate has been exposed. Yep, that's the cure. Tracy rolled at the back. That was sprayed. This is sprayed? That's a, no, that's the rub part. They sprayed the liner uh -huh. and it ran. Right. The other question I had is, what's the repeating pattern? Is there like a four foot length and then it repeats, or do you know how? I assume it repeats eventually. Well, it's it's actually a continuous, I mean, there's no... So it just goes way. like... A, it just keeps... Uh, it goes a long way, and yeah. so you're not going to find some moment where you see, oh, I recognize that little piece of yeah, aggregate I, I don't think 10 you feet down the out. line. I, I, I really don't think so. Yeah. No, me neither. I, this is pretty much random. You know, it's, I think the way they made this is that they, they cast like a, a block and it split, you know, and then... Yeah, so, because that's, so it's like the, a real thing, but right. now not real anymore, because what, what, like what looks like a, like a stone, stone is just a cement. cement yeah. That's amazing. Okay, I've had enough. <laughs>